What is up everybody, Nerocosm here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Hyde Rebel. Now, the Hyde Rebel Rechargeable Disposable is the biggest puff count by Hyde um, until its equal match, the N-Bar, came out. The Rebel has a massive 4,500 puffs and is available in 16 different flavors. To put the puff count into perspective, think of the Jewel. Even before the FDA banned all of the flavors that we loved, the pot size was only 0.7 milliliters, lasting only about 200 puffs or so. And we all know how I feel about Jewel, and when we parted ways, I never looked back. Bringing on its competitor, the Views Alto, on the other hand, they brought big improvements to the vaping foreground as far as pod system vapes. Bringing us a bigger pod at 1.8 milliliters and lowering its wattage to give its longevity to the puffs, even outperforming its previous pro by giving us a 500 puff count now. Clearly, this leads the way with a 4,500 puffs. The Hyde Rebel seems to just be on top. But let's talk price point. You can buy a jewel for roughly $10, depending on the state you live in, and let's say you add in a pack of four jewel pods, which is 800 puffs, that's another $16, again, depending on the state that you live. And for those of you ahead of me, that's a total of $26 for 800 puffs. So let's, let's keep that in mind. Moving on to the Views Alto, it comes at a much better price of 99 cents for the device. Now that four pack of pods is about $18, with again for you math wits that are ahead of me, is $19 for a 2000 puff system. Now what about the Hyde Rebel? It beats everyone in its puffs of 4500, so it couldn't possibly be as cheap as the rest of the options, right? Well, guess again. Coming in at only $20, that's $1 more than the view system at 2000 puffs. Now, given that it's doubling the performance and giving you a choice between more flavors than just menthol or tobacco, the odds seem to be stacked against the competition. Now, its biggest downfall, in my opinion, for the Hyde Rebel just has to be the amount of waste that it's producing. Now, we did not do an unboxing of this because it always makes me mad. Uh, it has the same packaging that the Hyde Enbar is, and the link for that video will be at the end of this one. Now, it's also disposable. While finding a loophole in the FDA that allows disposables like this to have as many flavors as they want, limiting the pod systems, that's still a big problem when it comes to e-waste. Now, as you know, this is a plastic thing, but there's also a battery inside of this. So, that leads us to the fact that it's also a matter of environment, and is our trade-off really worth it? Well, to someone addicted to nicotine, they'd probably say, yes, why not? This is a much better system. And it's not like smoking a regular cigarette doesn't leave a billion butts laying around everywhere, you know? Everything is going to have some sort of effect on the environment. Someone else, on the other hand, who just sees it as it is, a single core in the pile of e-waste that our Earth is paying for, they'd probably say we need a solution for a cyclability of disposable vapes. As for me, on the other hand, all I can say is that this vape is a start to something better. It's not the best, but it is damn good compared to the other options. It's cheap, it's plentiful, and it outperforms a lot of the competitors. As for the taste... The strawberry and cream definitely took some getting used to. When I started off, it kind of had that, you know, like most vapes do, it's just fresh out of the package, so it doesn't, the coil hasn't been primed or anything like that. But after a while, I gotta say, it's really good. And the deep taste kind of adds uh, more of a throat hit. I do enjoy it. Until next time, everyone, this has been Nero Kaza. Make sure to check out the Hide End Bar review. It's somewhere around here. If I had to take a guess, I'd say down here? Down here. Click on this video. It's important. It talks about stuff we didn't talk about. Click on it. Did you click on it? Click on it.